Now, the Nigerian Bar Association has rejected the impeachment of the Deputy Governor of Kogi State, Simon Achuba, by the State House of Assembly. Their umbrella body of lawyers said the impeachment was illegal and unconstitutional because it was against the findings of the pro panel raised by the state chief judge, which cleared Achuba of wrongdoings. The NBA, in a statement by its National Publicity Secretary, Kunle Edun, said it viewed the events with serious concerns and urged all parties to exercise great caution. And now with me in the studio is legal practitioner Liberos Oshoma, and he gives us legal inter interpretation rather of the development in Kogi State. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay, so very quickly, I'm sure you followed uh, the event that happened. Uh, first of all, um, does the law recognize the impeachment of uh, Simon Achuba? No, no, not at all. Uh, not? In, in, a, in as far as um, that process is concerned, in the eye of the law, Simon Achuba is still um, the deputy governor, and, mm -hmm. and so um, there was no vacuum in the office for Edward to have been sworn in. And so whether the chief judge of the state sworn in, you know, another person or not is immaterial mm -hmm. as far as the law is concerned. And um, if you look at um, the section, section 188 of the 1999 constitution that spells out the steps that must be followed, you know, to impeach a governor, a deputy governor, because mm -hmm. of time, specifically, if you go to subsection 8 of that section 180, it says where the panel reports, that's a panel set up to investigate mm -hmm. the allegations raised by the assembly. Where the panel report to the House of Assembly that the allegation has not been proved, no further proceedings shall be taken in respect of that matter. Mm -hmm. Shall be the operative word here, compulsion shall be taken no further proceedings. You can't go beyond that. And then, so the moment the panel led by a, a, a Leonard Senior Advocate heard that the allegations against the Deputy Governor were not proved by those who were alleging. Mm -hmm. And that ordinarily ended the matter. So every other steps taken subsequently became a nullity in the eye of our law. And then, so whether the Chief Judge of the state you know, was prompted or was threatened to swear in somebody else as deputy governor, it's, it's really material here because you cannot, you know, you can't have two deputy governor in a state. Mm -hmm. and, and I say this advisedly because um, it is also very common for us here to say, uh, let the uh, Simon, let Simon Achuba go to court. It's not a question of going to court here. The issue is, has, you know, an illegality, an abuse of our constitution, you know, be committed here? Yes, it has been. Mm -hmm. and, and so why do you now, ask the man who has been wronged, mm -hmm. who has been stolen from in broad daylight, instead of the state protecting him now. It's like a policeman standing right in, in traffic and then aiding a, a, you know, an alleged criminal to steal your phone. Mm -hmm. And then he says, instead of chasing the criminal, arresting him, mm -hmm. he says, go to court. You know, that's what basically is, is, is playing out here. And the, uh, unfortunately, the Supreme Court, the same court, had had opportunity of interpreting or having a bite on this same section 180, if you remember the Ladoja's case and the Peter Obis case. And the courts in that, because before then, it was the popular notion among lawyers that once a governor, a deputy governor is impeached by provisions of subsection 10 of section 180, that process cannot be challenged in courts. But because by challenging it would mean that interfering the powers of the legislature. And the court in its wisdom said no, that you must comply strictly with the provisions of subsection 1 to 9 before you can invoke subsection 10. So in this case, the interpretation is that you must strictly comply with the provisions as laid down. And so when there is non-compliance, it amounts to a nullity. And so we shouldn't encourage illegality by saying that the man should go to court. I also expect, lastly, that the Attorney General should do a strongly worded legal opinion to the state governor to advise him, if let's assume that he doesn't know, mm -hmm. to advise him. That's how you, Attorney General should behave and protect the law. It is his responsibility. I mean the Attorney General of the Federation. Yes. It is his responsibility to protect the law of the land, not just as a legal advisor to the executive, but also as the chief, number one chief law officer of the state. So it's a slap, actually. Mm -hmm on Attorney General, a sitting Attorney General, when something ha like this happened and you know, he maintains a conspiracy of silence. Hmm. Having said that, uh, you've given us the interpretation of the law there. Now, does the law, again, recognize the new this one in uh, a deputy of Noja? I, I already said it, that um, since there is no vacuum mm -hmm. 
you can have, you can't, yes, it's there on its own, whether sworn in or, or not, because there is no vacuum. In as far as the law is concerned, there is no vacuum. If you remember, in Peter Obi's case, why the matter was in court, the, he was purportedly impeached, and so he approached the courts. And the court said, maintain status quo. While the matter was in court, election was conducted mm -hmm. to fill the uh, uh, governorship seats that produced Anduba then, if you remember. And the court said, the Supreme Court said there was no vacuum. And so there was no vacuum for you to fill. So in the same interpretation, the same vein, in the case of Kogi, the deputy governorship of Kogi, borrowing the words of you, you know, the Supreme Court, there was no vacuum to be filled for a, a new in the deputy governor place. yes, to be sworn in. And, and so in the eye, that's why I said in the eye of the law, uh -huh. the deputy governor has not been in, impeached because you just making a pronouncement that you hereby impeach him under what allegation? Because the, the beauty of the law is that those, that provision of section 180 is the fact that be, be, be impeachment being a very you know, important aspect of, um, of governance, it did not you know, the, the, the drafters of the constitution did not allow it to solely, you know, be domiciled in the hands of the legislature. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to also invite another arm of government, which in this turn is the judiciary, to say, let's, yes, you levy allegation against somebody, let the judiciary perform a quasi-judicial function here by setting up a panel to conduct the investigation to, into the allegation you have levied. And so if they now conduct those allegations and say, look, these allegations have not been proved, then you can't go further. You remember also in the case of um, Al Makura in mm -hmm. um, Nasarawa State, it was the same thing. The House of Assembly left, the, you know, some members of the House of Assembly left the chambers, went to sit down in a hotel, in spite of the Supreme Court judgment in um, uh, Peter Obi and that of Court of Appeal in Ladoja, that the business of the assembly must be conducted in the place designated for it. They went to the met in a hotel and now served impeachment notice mm. on the governor and asked the CGN to constitute a panel. The C, the, sorry, the chief judge, chief judge of the state. The chief judge did consider the panel, and at the end of the day, the panel said allegations have not been proved, and, and so that ended the matter. And so that's what ordinary should happen here. And we shouldn't allow, you know, the emperors that we are breeding that we call governors now mm. to so with impunity, violate our constitution and then look the other way. Because if you allow him to do what he has done today now, he, so who knows, who set a very bad precedent. Mm -hmm. Some persons can just sit down and say, we have impeached a sitting governor. Mm -hmm. Or some members of the National Assembly can just sit down and, and say, you know, they are levying an allegation against a president, even though the CGN will set up a panel and say, those allegations are not been proved. And then to third majority, just sit down by a voice vote and say, he stands impeached. And, and, and that day, you, you know, we we'll know the, the, the bad precedent we have set for ourselves mm. by all keeping quiet. So it's better to leave it at the board. Having yes. said that, uh, our final question is, what, what are the implications? Because we know that for the state now, in two weeks, that in some weeks, uh, they're supposed to have elections. What are the implications with all of this uh, new development? The legal implication for me is uh, they are very glaring and, um, you know, very dangerous because what the implication here now is that uh, for the opposition party, most especially, mm -hmm. is that elections are going to be very, you know, bloody. If you can, you know, with impunity violate the constitution like this, it means that you will do anything to retain that seat. And that's where also our security operatives also should rise up to the plate. And that's why the federal government that sworn to protect lives and property should not also allow this to just slip by because when you know, people violate laws with impunity like this and then you keep quiet, what they are indirectly telling you is that, look, we will do anything to retain the seat we are. So politics even. shouldn't be a do or die affair. There should be rules and the rules you know, should be upheld and then everybody should learn to play by the books. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Liberal Sashama there, for your thoughts. My pleasure. Thank you.